And Dr. Eleanor Tatum of the Amsterdam News System, thank you as well. Really appreciate it. Always great to be with you. That's fantastic. All right. uh, We'll see you next time. And as I always say in parting, adios. Opinions expressed on this broadcast are not necessarily those of either WGCB 620 AM, its staff or management, or our parent company, Glory Communications Incorporated. South Carolina, the nation, and the world. We put it all in perspective with Armstrong Williams up next on WGCV 620 AM. 620 AM. Oftentimes, we're seeing our children leave high school with a diploma in one hand and a criminal record in the other. At the 620 AM town hall meeting in February, Representative Joe Neal pinpointed a growing problem in South Carolina. The zero tolerance policy and the presence of school resource officers has changed the learning landscape. Yet, there is hope. There's a large amount of latitude available to schools to determine how they will respond to a misbehavior by a child. At- The sweet potato pie. Mm, mm, mm. Even the keenest taste buds will tell you the best food on the planet. Large enough to serve you and small enough to know you. So get the Henry's at 5431 Indian Head Highway, Oxen Hill, Maryland, or give us a call at 301 749 6856. Welcome to the Armstrong Williams Show, brought to you by Golden Crust Bakery, the fastest growing Caribbean-owned franchise in the United States. Golden Crust is committed to the delivery of quality food and excellent customer service. Visit them today at goldencrustbakery.com. Doctor, professor, renaissance, teacher, doctor, renowned Thelma Reese, how are you today? Oh, today, (laughs) Armstrong, I'm a whole year older. Oh, today's your birthday? Yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. So now? You're the big 8-0. To the big 8-0. Oh, wow. That's significant. That's what I say. (laughs) Oh, wow. How did I get here? That is amazing. Dr. Flasher, can you believe she's turned 80? <laughs> Has Dr. Flasher not joined us? Going by. Yes, I'm here. Isn't that something? 80, 80 years old? Yeah, I cannot believe that so many years have flo- absolutely flown by. Yep. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Where have they gone? They're going too fast. There's oh. so much to do. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yes, 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 yes. What? What? Did you feel any different? I'll tell you. I have to confess, it feels so much better than I thought it would. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really does. It's not just all the incredible celebrating I'm doing, and Armstrong. You happen to know my husband, and when I tell you, Harvey Reese says. I'm really milking this. <laughs> That's a stretch. I don't think I'm milking it. I think I'm really enjoying it. And, and I, I really you? You turn have... out to be very grateful to be able to do it. 
And you have so many friends who are celebrating with you. Exactly. Makes yes, all the they difference. They are, and just, just re absolutely rejoicing. And um, I think that that uh, w what you're saying is is absolutely true. Whoever thought it would feel this good to be this old? But but are you <laughs> but, 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 but are you saying are you saying this to make yourself feel young and feel good? Are you saying it because that's just the way you really feel? It's not that you're in denial. You're not shocked. Oh my God, I'm 80. Is, I mean, no, just, just I'm, know, I'm challenging. I'm challenging you. It isn't. It isn't to make myself feel young because I now I I accept the fact. I truly accept the fact that I'm not young, and you know I think I kind of understand what my mother said to me when she was ninety, and that is she said, you know I can't get over the fact that I'm ninety because I realize I'm still the same person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she really thought about things. And, and now I think I understand what she was saying. It's that when you get to this age, if you're lucky enough to get to it and you're in relative good health and you still have your faculties, you know, it's really a good thing. You know what? Because so, I do think I know more than I used to. Well, of course. But you know what I think is even deeper about what is deeper about this for someone like myself? It is such a blessing. It is so miraculous when you think about the beginning yep. of man and the, yep. and the ages of life expectancy where it used to be 25 and 30, then 40. Right. Um, and, and when right. you think about, I remember Jones Rivers turned um, 80 this year. Yeah. And um, um, there, there's this, you know, I was in... Um, I was in Israel, and they have this Jewish ritual uh, that where you gather among family and friends, and and a family member began this ceremony. There's something special in Jewish tradition when you turn 80 years old, which I was a part of it when I was in Israel so many years ago. Ah, and uh -huh. I was thinking, oh my goodness, if more people could see this, you know, it's sort of like it was like a um, we are family. Um, yeah. That it, it, they were interested in these rituals, uh, sort of like this mm -hmm. feminism, this psychotherapy, and Judaism have been resources uh, that have created rituals that have deepened our appreciation of the spiritual and sacred aspects of life and the life cycle. Mm -hmm. and, and many mm -hmm. of us come to celebrations where we have incorporated our own rituals into naming ceremonies, bars and bar mitzvah services and ceremonies honoring adoption marriage. But they also have one that honors people who turn 80 because all religions teach respect for, this, for the elderly. And Jewish law and Lord teaches that wisdom comes with age. And imagine the wisdom if leaders, young leaders and young people started along the way. Imagine that they could sit at your feet and just learn just what you've forgotten. And, and, and what they can do sometimes is when they sit with someone who's 80 years old, they can trigger you to go back to things that you could not remember before. They can bring that up. Because in contrast to growing up, which is marked with a series of formal and informal rituals, promotions, I mean, f when you think about your age and when you think about what you accomplish, I mean, and you look at so many people that die so young and die from famine and disease and die from freak accidents oh. and all and people who are in the World Trade Center and, and die from airplane crashes. Just mm. think that you are one of those people. Exactly. That exactly. You, you made this That's, walk in relatively good health. It's an amazing yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it from that perspective. Uh, exactly. I, I you know, that, that's really, that's really the, the main part of it all is to know, uh, and especially for Dr. Fleischer and me, to know that we are still not only functioning, but starting something new, still being creative, uh, that you, Armstrong, are interested, interested in what we think. That your audience cares still about us is really a blessing. Well, you know what? I, I, I learn I'm better. I'm, I'm, I, am, I don't have to learn from my own bad judgment and my own walk through life. I, I, you know, because I've known you for a long time since the days of um, 
hooked on products, and, I, and I've known you the days of the Republican convention when you allowed me to rent your home in Philadelphia. Well, you didn't rent it to me. You actually let me have I it. I didn't no rent it to you. I gave it you to you. You gave it to me. <laughs> and yet our relationship has blossomed into this. Who would have seen, who would have seen this? But what life tells us, if we build these relationships, right, it doesn't matter about age. What matters is about the trust, the faithfulness, the communication. So, absolutely. It's amazing what can become of it. It is, and, and I learned a lot of that from you, you younger man, because I can remember one time you invited me to a, a, a sort of a panel thing that you were putting together uh, for Im very important people in Washington, and I said to you, Armstrong, are you sure you want me to come? Because, you know, I don't agree with you politically. And you said... Did I ask you what you were going to say? <laughs> and I thought, oh, boy, he's really smart. <laughs> well, and and open and, and exactly. wanting to hear. And, I mean, these are all, these are all such treasures that, that, that you right. offer, Armstrong, the, 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 the willingness to listen and, and listen with a very, you know, open mind and open heart, even if you don't agree with, exactly. with what you know that I'm, I may say. Uh, but you not, respect, right. but you respect and, I get the feeling that you have a great deal of respect for, for, for human beings, for people, and it, it's not because they agree with you. Well, you know That's what, politics, politics is so irrelevant, so, well, so overrated. you know, you have said that to me, and what it made me realize, it, it really taught me a lesson, because it's so easy to really just talk about things with people who agree with you. Yes. But, you know, that's really the easy way, and it doesn't get you that far. But when people, when you say something... Whether people agree with you or not, they can trust that you have really thought through and listened to all kinds of opinions before you reached your own. Look, I am just so happy that when you think about people who lose and the tragedies and the kind of diseases that we have going on today, I mean, when you think about the fact that you can celebrate 80 years old, I I'm telling you, and and look, you're still as active, still as alert, as still as wise, still as innovative, still as brilliant as you've ever been. I mean, I'm not gonna call it the new eighty, the new twenty, because it's still eighty. But you know, I, I don't know if exactly. you know. Exactly. I don't. I don't yeah. Thank you. You know, even thank you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> what it is. It's, it's eighty. You know, according to Exodus, I, I, you know, I've read the Bible several times. You know, I remember that Moses was eighty years old when he initially spoke to Pharaoh on behalf of the people. And today, 80 years of age is the upper age limit for cardinals to vote and palpable elections. Uh -huh. Very significant. And according to sayings uh -huh. from Islamic prophet Muhammad, prophet uh -huh. Abraham was circumcised when he was 80 years old. Ouch. Yes. And we'll be back. I'm Armstrong sure Williams. Don't go away. We'll be back. Say bye bye burgers. Pass on the pizza. Forget the frangs. Anytime is party time. Discover Golden Cross's authentic Jamaican style patties. Beef, chicken, vegetables, soya, spinach, and shrimp. Feast on our great taste sensations. Jerk chicken, ox scale, sliced fish, and much more. Savor the taste of the Caribbean. Only at a Golden Cross near you. A family tradition since 1949. GoldenCrossBakery.com For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.RightSideWire.com There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com.
Hi, this is Armstrong Williams. What does it mean to be conservative? Freedom of speech, freedom of free enterprise, freedom of assembly, less government, less taxes. As a matter of fact, a flat tax. Everyone should pay proportional tax. It doesn't matter whether you make a hundred million or ten thousand. Everyone should pay their ten percent. Everyone should have something at stake in this American economy. I'm Armstrong Williams expressing what we mean by conservative traditional value. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas. Spectacular land prices. 8,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet lot. Affordable prices. Hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea. Just call 242-677-3120 or 3121 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. Welcome back to the broadcast. Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, my mother's 87, so... Uh, I remember when she turned 80, we parted like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we were so happy she made it to 80. Uh, and we just saw it was such a... You know how it is when you're younger. Am I going to make it to 50? Well, 60. Oh, if I make it to 70, I would have lived a mm-hmm. full life. And then you get the 75. And then you get the 80. And once you make it 80, you start getting greedy. <laughs> That's right. You, you're waiting. You're waiting for that big one oh oh. Oh yeah, you start really. <laughs> right. You start saying, you know what? This is. I'm enjoying this. And then you realize you're not like a lot of people. You're not a semi invalid. You can get around. You're still in the marketplace. You're still writing books. You're putting up websites. Right. You begin to say, you know what? I'm liking this. Yeah. That's exactly. right. <laughs> it keeps That's you going. It's sort right. of a self perpetuating thing that at least. You know, this day, this time right now is working. And I think, I think that's what the other thing that happens to you is you really do. That's why my mother kept saying as she got older, one day at a time, if she had a good day, she just appreciated it so and felt so good about it. And, uh, it's it's learning to appreciate that time that you have. You know, I want... also, I, I don't know, all through my life, I've always thought each decade has something so special to offer that the others don't have. And so far, every decade brings something, something, very, mm-hmm. something new and something really good and exciting mm-hmm. that you didn't have before. Yeah. The, the fact that each one is, is each decade is different uh, yeah. It's just so enriching of your life. Talk about the difference in some of the decades that you've experienced. Well, in looking back um, to, say, the, the 20s, when I felt so independent um, and truly on my own, and uh, looking forward in the 30s, oh, I, I sort of had a a pretty good handle on what I wanted to do in life and uh, ha- was setting out to do it. Had children, um, you know, ha- the family was, was uh, being started, and that was a very special kind of, of, of um, excitement in, in, in every day. And I don't mean that every day 
I don't want to sound like a Pollyanna. I mean, there were plenty of days that were uh, difficult uh, or that I just wished um, that, that I could have a little peace and quiet and privacy. I don't mean that it was all uh, wonderful at the time, but it, but it was special in its own way. And in the 40s and 50s, that, that sort of continued, and there was a confidence that I had uh, that I hadn't had before. Um, the 60s, I began to feel independent again, uh, only I had a lot more, oh, I think I was a, little, a lot wiser. I was financially more comfortable um, so that once the children left uh, the home, um, my husband and I were able to have, a, you know, a, a very special kind of of uh, involvement in life that was, in in many ways, as free as I'd been at any point in my life. Seventies came along, and then those grandchildren arrived, and um, that was was um, uh, a very special kind of of, of feeling and, and excitement, and. Um, Sometimes I felt that we bypa- the, the grandchildren and I bypassed their parents and my children, <laughs> and we, you know, we had a, a, such a special relationship that that um, that was um, something I had never experienced before. And now I'm 82. I've I've already had the big 80, uh, and there is this wisdom, and uh, I think this book that we're writing is just given me such a, a feeling of, of creation uh, that, w- that is totally different from the kind of creating that I did in childbearing. So each, each decade uh, brings its own excitement, its own rewards, its own challenges. And boy, you know, does that make life interesting. You know, I, you know it's interesting um, listening to you describe the different decades you know you know with the exception of um when i was in my 20s and i lost my father i've not experienced a lot of death of people that are really close to me but when you think about having a lot of brothers and you've got people that you're close to and as you age i've watched people where they just go through this decade where there's just nothing but loss and tragedy they can have that season and yet it, they become something entirely different and if they survive it um, you can still see the loss on their face and oftentimes in that conversation, yeah. but they're more at peace with the fact that they're going to die because they've seen so much that they love have already gone ahead. Talk about that. I think, I think that's very true, that um, after that terrible jolt of loss, and no matter how prepared you are for it, uh, loss of a parent, le- loss of anybody close to you. Um, there does come a point, I think, in every case, where one day you realize that you're not grieving the same way, that you've really managed to absorb and incorporate so much of what that other person meant to you into yourself. The, the person really is a part of you, and uh, that relationship has never gone away. Um, you, you, still, you still are as closely bonded as you were when they were alive, but that takes a long time. It takes a long time, and it takes seeing that happen over and over, not just to yourself, but to realize that we all go through it, and we will go through it, and we will leave. Uh, and and the people that we love will will suffer our loss too. But I realized uh, the other day. I think I said to uh, Bobby that I think I think it turns out in the end <laughs> that maybe the best thing we can do for our own children is to ex- exhibit the kind of acceptance of aging and as much as we can the the enjoyment of it as possible so that they see that that's possible. Dr. Fleischer, juxtapose the losses with the new life that's coming into the family. I'm sorry, I'm going to say that again. Juxtapose 
the many losses that we suffer from family and friends, with the new life, the grandkids, the young being born and continuing their leg legacy? Well, that has to be one of the most exciting parts of living. I mean, you, you, you suffer the loss. And, and to go back to what, what, Selma, what you were saying about loss, just, just before I go on to the other, I, I feel as though I am my husband and me. I am mm -hmm. the two of us. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he is no longer here mm -hmm. physically yeah. Um, doesn't mean that he is any less here yeah. within me and spiritually. Yeah, you and have really incorporated absolutely. that whole relationship. You're, you're still together. Absolutely. I would just not be the same person if it hadn't been for that relationship. And, of course, it was you know, for so many years. Um and and I I also but 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 it does I also know that had his loss caused me to ruin my life and 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 be nothing after that because I would be nothing without him would have yeah. distressed him unbelievably he would have been very very uh, disappointed in me if that mm -hmm. had happened mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I, this is something that I could, I just didn't know before it actually happened. Yeah. I, I didn't know how this would be until, until I lived through it. Uh, and there's no question that the new life that comes with your, as they did with your children, of course, but certainly with, with the grandchildren, and it, even if they're not your own grandchildren, but, but the children that you see around you, nieces and nephews, um, uh, friends, children. Yeah. When you yeah. see that, it it it, and, and feel the the joy and the closeness and the involvement. If you do make sure that you are involved with them, that is a rejuvenation. That that is um, is it's as the seasons develop. Right. It, it, you know uh, you you yeah. You really you really need. You don't have to have children to mm -hmm. have that right. feeling. I, I see that more than ever now. Right. And I love my children. I treasure my mm -hmm. daughters and, and my grandchildren. But I do know that if I didn't have children, I could feel the same way, and I often do, about other children. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. at this point, they don't have to be from me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I just take such pleasure in what young people are doing and in working with them whenever I can. That that is a tremendous blessing in life. Right. It's not just that, it's not when they're only when they're babies. I mean they're very cute when they're babies. Yeah. But it's really wonderful to see them as they're growing up and developing themselves into uh their their twenties and 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 right. and they're finding them searching for answers in 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 life. It's it's just very exciting to watch that. I'm very just, excited. Hold, hold to there, work hold with there. We're coming back, and Mike the Cutler will be joining us. Don't go away. I'm Armstrong Williams. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Life is full of unexpected changes. Everyone has potential to do wrong. And when they choose to do it, contact the Buxell Group for your private investigation needs. TheBuxellGroup.com or by phone at 202-243-9746. Whether there's an instance of a cheating spouse, child custody, process service, or security, don't continue suspecting. 
get closure so that you can move on with your life. Visit thebucksellgroup.com now or call 202-243-9746. If you think it's happening, it probably is. To travelers along the road of life who have fallen asleep at the wheel, to the many who woke up in time to avert disaster and get back on the righteous path. For the ones who crashed and survived and now adhere vigilantly to a virtuous and righteous path. Finally, Armstrong Williams' much-anticipated new book, Reawakening Virtues, gives his insights into these daily challenges and much more. Reawakening Virtues is available in bookstores and at Amazon.com. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sports shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Most Americans simply have never been taught the basics of money management, let alone how to secure their financial future. But there is hope. Financial Education and Literacy Advisors, also known as FILA, does what others don't. FILA teaches financial education. If you'd like more information about providing a financial wellness program for your employees or a credit-bearing college course in personal finance or other valuable programs, please visit MyFeela.com. That's M-Y-F-E-L-A dot com or send an email to info at MyFeela.com. Elder Chicks is an exciting part of the fastest growing segment of the population. Women in their 70s, 80s, and older who are mastering the art of a senior life. We're no longer unseen and unheard. We're providing role models for each other and the baby boomers who are fast approaching retirement. Join our virtual community. Hit www.elderchicks.com on your computer keyboard. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back to the Armstrong Williams Show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're um, Dr. 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 Ms. Dr. Dr. Reese, Dr. Fleischer. Um, so we're going to delve into some, um, some uh, I guess, news of the day with Michael Cutler, who's our immigration expert. Say hello to Dr. Reese and Dr. Fleischer. You've got to get to the mic. Go ahead. Hi. Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? I am terrific. It's so you've got to good. tell us what's on your mind today. She, yeah, no, me, you, you. Oh, me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm in town because I'm going to be speaking at the Act for America event tomorrow morning. And immigration's the hot issue right now, as you, as you know. I can't wait to engage the elder chicks about immigration. <laughs> <laughs> we never know. Go ahead, Mike. Well, you, you know, look, I, I'm watching what's going on. And I, and I have to tell you, I, I'm looking at the insanity that passes for leadership and representation. And that's what's driving me absolutely crazy. Uh, I, and I'm sure that Armstrong is upset. And, you know, progressives for immigration reform are doing an event on July 15th in Washington. Because this is the most critical challenge and threat that we're facing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I don't know what you mean. No, well, challenge him. Let, let's challenge him. Don't let him put words in your mouth. Tell me, tell, tell me what kind of threat you're saying. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know my background. I was an INS agent for 30 years. I worked on narcotics investigations and terrorism. If you have no control over who comes across your border, you're going to wind up with criminals and terrorists as well as people who are desperate to work. And those desperate to work, by the way, are creating enough of a problem for everybody because they're taking jobs Americans would, ha- would love to do given the economy. Uh, so understand the point. The reason we have immigration laws is just two basic principles protect innocent lives and to protect the jobs of American workers. And if you look at the African community in particular, the level of poverty, unemployment, underemployment is is catastrophic. How in the world would it help any American, especially American minorities, if we suddenly dump millions or maybe tens of millions of foreign workers into the job market when Americans can't find work? Is that what the immigration bill is suggesting that we do? Absolutely, because if you in what, give, what, in what way? I, wa- I wasn't uh, aware that that they were planning to open the doors to anybody and everybody without any uh, screening at uh, all. Well, let me tell you what's going on. 
you heard about the DREAM Act, I'm sure, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're you, already here. However. All right. Well, you don't know that. And here's the point of, of saying it. How do you prove when somebody entered the United States, if you do not have the capacity to do a field investigation in the street, and they make no ent- record of entry when they cross the border? Understand that when someone runs the border, there is no record of their entry. Do you know what kind of scrutiny they are giving the folks that have applied for participation in what was supposed to be the DREAM Act, now it's called the Deferred Action Childhood Arrival Cases? They These are, are children who are already here. Well, you're These saying are children that, whose parents may have come illegally, but they're already here. And you don't know that, and that's, and that's the problem. Do you know what the interview is like that they're giving them? How no, should, children? Like. Yeah, well, these aren't necessarily children. Do you know what the age cutoff is? What? what? What's the Are age cutoff? How, that, let me finish. Uh, let me just ask you a question. How old do you think you can be to register to participate in the DREAM Act, this Deferred Action Program? You're saying 20, children. 25? How about 31. So you don't were know they, if the guy were they, got... Were they, did they go to school here? Did they grow right, up me, here? Are their parents here? Right, let, me, let me tell you what the problem is. They are not even doing a face-to-face interview. Period. There is nobody who can go out and knock on doors and show a photograph and ask questions. So if I gave the name of somebody whose name is in a yearbook of a high school, it would be easy for me to game the process. In fact, according to the Washington Times... Nearly 99% of the people who have applied, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands, have had their applications approved. They are unable to conduct investigations or even face-to-face interviews. This Why is, is that? Because it's not funded or because it's not in the... Uh... It's a bunch of reasons, but let's start with how many people that they process normally. As it is, Citizenship and Immigration Services processes over 6 million applications already. In fact, a couple of years ago, it was found by the General Accountability Office that that agency claimed to have lost 111,000 files and processed 30,000 applications for citizenship, U.S. citizenship, without providing the files to the adjudications officers. This is such a catastrophe for national security. I've arrested terrorists, and I gave testimony to the 9-11 Commission. Uh, By the way, if you want, you can go to my website, michaelcutler.net. I'm also a senior fellow with a terrific organization, CAPS, California's Population Can you spell your last name? Sure. It's C-U-T-L-E-R, Cutler, michaelcutler.net. Or you can go to capsweb.org. Uh, and I've been writing about this. You know, what, 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 you should, about what you should probably do, uh, because obviously this is a shock to our guests, uh, I understand it because I do a lot of research on this. I've talked to you. You should give, you should lay out what the issues are and sure. what, how the public has yeah. been deceived and then give them a chance to respond. Okay, that's fine. Because that's the best way because this is a shock to them. I understand. You, you, you make the assumption that many people know what you know, but they don't. Fair enough, Armstrong. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Good point. Okay. The immigration laws are designed to prevent the entry of bad guys. In fact, I was an inspector for the beginning of my career. And there's a section of law, and I don't want to get heavy on law. It's Title VIII, United States Code, Section 1182. It's the only piece of law I'm going to talk about. But it tells the inspector what the guidelines are. We are not supposed to let in aliens with dangerous communicable diseases or if they suffer mental illness and they're violent or sex offenders or criminals or gang members or spies or terrorists war criminals, human rights violators, they are supposed to be kept out. And then we get to people who would become public charges or take jobs they're not entitled to. So these are important issues. When someone runs the border, when they sneak in, we have no idea who they are and why they came across the border. Maybe they're looking for work, or maybe they're a fugitive because they killed a bunch of people in another country, or maybe they're part of a terrorist organization, or perhaps they're part of a criminal organization. So the inspections process is more than a formality. Uh, You know, I listened to the president saying, well, you know, the people who came through Ellis Island, do you think they checked off all the boxes? In point of fact, Ellis Island was a quarantine station. My mom, may she rest in peace, came through Ellis Island. It's not insignificant that we have a legal process by which, by the way, we admit more than a million lawful immigrants every year. They're given green cards and they are immediately on the path to citizenship. That's more than the rest of the world combined. So that works, you see, and that system doesn't even have the integrity it should. But now we're dealing with a population, and we don't know how big it is. 
they're telling us 11 million, maybe 12 million. In 1986, I was an agent back then, we were told about a million people would be involved with that amnesty, the Reagan amnesty. We wound up with nearly 4 million. If they're telling us 11 million now and the same ratio holds true, we could wind up with 30, 35 million. And because they don't create a record of entry and there's no way of verifying what they say, what prevents somebody from saying, oh yeah, I've been here for five years when they've been here for five days? Remember, we're talking about a population that has no official documentation. That's what undocumented means. They may have been using multiple false identities, which is why identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America today. So this is about national security. It's about the jobs Americans desperately need. It's about overcrowded hospitals and overcrowded schools. And the people that are benefiting from this are the people who exploit illegal aliens or foreign workers. The, the immigration uh, reform bill would also permit millions of so-called temporary workers to come to America to compete with American high-skilled, highly educated workers, including computer programmers, engineers, technicians, and scientists. This is about lowering the wages. And in fact, Alan Greenspan, who headed up the Federal Reserve Bank, um, in 2009 testified for Chuck Schumer over at the Immigration Subcommittee in the, in the Senate and said that the Americans who have skills have become a privileged elite earning a wage premium and they shouldn't earn that much money and we could solve this problem. This is what Greenspan said, by making them compete with foreign workers for their jobs. The immigration laws created the middle class by shielding American workers from unfair foreign competition they want to roll that back. They are following the blueprint that Alan Greenspan created. And he said that the goal should be to greatly reduce inequality in wages, which is an interesting phrase because we're all in favor of, of getting rid of inequality if it's based on race, religion, ethnicity, gender. But for him, it was inequality based on skill or education. I thought that was called the American dream. Do you see the problem I have with it? Well, you know, one of the things, you're talking about things in present tense as though the present immigration laws, I'm presuming you're thinking of, you're, you're, you're talking about the ones, the immigration laws with all their amendments that are coming before Congress, uh, we hope, within the next couple of months. Um, you're speaking about two different populations. You're speaking about the population that is here and how they got here, or are you speaking about future immigration. Well, here's the problem. I mean, I thought that part of, part of the, the thing is we, I, I don't know whether you're suggesting that we round up these 11 plus million people and ship them back or deal with the problem of any future immigrants. Okay, here's the deal. Make sure that they are screened. I, I, by the way, if you can't do it now, how will you do it then? But no one is suggesting that we round up 11 million. Hold, uh, hold that point. Okay. Okay. Michael Cullum, very good discussion. The other chicks are on their A-game today, and they're not just going to take Michael's word on that. He's got to convince them. And I will. And he will. I will. And you will hear it when we come back. Absolutely. I'm up for it. Say bye-bye burgers. Pass on the pizza. Forget the frangs. Anytime is patty time. Discover Golden Cross's authentic Jamaican-style patties. Beef, chicken, vegetables, soya, spinach, and shrimp. Mm. Feast on our great taste sensations. Jerk chicken, ox scale, sliced fish, and much more. Savor the taste of the Caribbean. Only at a Golden Cross near you. A family tradition since 1949. GoldenCrossBakery.com for more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? 
then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sport shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back, Dr. Thelma Reese, Dr. Bobby Fleischer. Michael Cutler, please continue. Sure. See, the problem that we have is that there's no integrity to the process. And this isn't what I'm telling you. It's what the General Accountability Office and what the Inspector General has found. And if you couple the fact that there's a lack of integrity with the findings of the 9-11 Commission, and in fact, I provided testimony to the 9-11 Commission at a bunch of congressional hearings, they identified immigration fraud and visa fraud as the two key ways that terrorists have entered the United States, not just on 9-11, but this has been going on for quite some time. And in fact, there's a recent story about a guy by the name of Wissam Alouche, who got U.S. citizenship by concealing the fact that he'd been a member of Hezbollah, which is a terrorist organization. Uh, allegedly, he killed a, an Israeli soldier, was working as a translator for a subcontractor for the United States Army in Iraq, and the FBI found out that he concealed these material facts when he applied for a security clearance with the Department of Defense. So understand the problem. If you can't have integrity to the program by which you're going to give people citizenship, green cards, lawful status, and if you know that the terrorists need fake names, false identities, to conceal their actions, their travels, and so forth, then what we've done is to have a dysfunctional system that can't handle its workload now being put in charge of running a program that in theory could wind up pros uh, um, adjudicating perhaps 30 million applications from foreign nationals without any way of knowing not even their names, but their countries of citizenship and that's what undocumented means. So understand Michael, the danger. Michael, may I ask you a question? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I really respect your background and what you've done. I mean, you obviously have been very much involved as an INS officer and, and beyond. Yes. Uh, and I can understand the dangers that you talk about. Right. But what are you proposing that we do? Okay. Here's Since a obviously... In many ways, it isn't a well-functioning system. No, it's a broken. It's and this, lots of terrible mistakes are made, and lots of people get through who shouldn't. Yep. But so, what is it that uh, uh, what we need to do? You want to see happen? Okay. If I had a magic wand, if that's what you're asking me. Yeah. Well, you can mail it to <laughs> to me because I need one desperately. Look, right. there's got to be integrity to the system. They're talking about the Mexican border. When we secure the Mexican border. Every state, in a manner of speaking, is a border state. We have millions of illegals who come through ports of entry, international airports, the northern border, seaports. So really, right. we're a country of 50 border states. 
there has to be consequences for people who violate the immigration laws. You know, there was concern about drunk drivers. They didn't provide amnesty to drunks. They said, you know what, we're going to make it more difficult on you. If you get caught drinking and driving, we're going to take your car, we're going to prosecute you, and so forth. And drunk driving dropped tremendously. When you promise to give people a pathway to citizenship who violate the borders that are supposed to protect us, and by the way, those same borders are protected by our military externally because their primary mission is to keep our enemies as far from our shores as possible when you think about it, and now we don't know who's here or why they're here. So rewarding people, and, and this business about, well, they're going to pay a fine and go to the end of the line is silly. A fine is meaningless to people that spend thousands of dollars on smugglers or document vendors. Uh, the back of the line for citizenship, they don't care about citizenship. They want to be able to work. We have got to make it clear that if you're here in violation of law, we're not going to accommodate you. It doesn't mean we're going to round up 11 million. We don't stop at a small percentage of any violator of law, whether it's speed laws, drug laws, tax laws. It's only a small percentage that get caught. But if you do get caught, then there has to be consequences. I was on with Neil Cavuto last week, and I said, you know what? It would be wonderful if an illegal alien got a piece of correspondence from the Department of Homeland Security and was as concerned about that correspondence as you or I would be if we got something from the IRS. We have to convince people around the world that our borders do matter, that our immigration laws do matter. And we have to, if we need to hire more agents, and I think we do, we only have 7,000 ICE agents for the whole country. Most of them aren't even doing immigration work. They're doing customs work. So what we really need to do is hire enough agents. New York City has 35,000 police officers just for the little city of New York. Uh, you know, and we used to have 40,000 cops. If we had 30,000 immigration agents, if they had the jail space, if they had the backing of the administration to enforce the laws. Right now their hands are tied, which is why the ICE union, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Union reps, uh, are suing the agency because they're being stump stumped when they try to do the job. So we really so are, you, are you suggesting then that we look at the people who are here, these uh, between 11 and 35 million, however you want to choose right. to sure. identify that. Okay, but you look at the, each one of these people and someone who has been living here for 10 years, living a law-abiding life, has um, gotten a job uh, because they're certainly, uh, the, the people who hire them are very happy to hire them at wages to lower than they them. would pay right. mm -hmm. um, uh, American citizens. Um has been working, uh, children have gone to school, they have led uh, certainly uh, decent lives, started businesses of their own. Are they to be considered on the same? Uh, uh, here's, uh, it's a good with, question. Think, with, because, because they entered illegally, are they to be considered um, to given the consequences, which, which we haven't stated what they are, but are, are they to receive the same consequences as someone all right, who... All right, all right, here's my question, all right? Okay. That was, well, that's my question. Uh, no, I understand, but now let me tell you what, what's inherent in what you've asked me that most people don't grasp, and, and there's a reason, and I understand it. It sounds wonderful if you've been here for 12 years. My question is, how do you prove how long an illegal alien has been present? We arrested... The kids are in school. No, no, please uh, listen to job. me. They've worked stop, on a job stop, for a few stop, years. stop, stop. You can't go out in the street to talk to anybody because there's too many applications to be processed in too short a period of time. They want the paper moved in about 20 minutes per application. Okay, so what do we do? Then what would, what would your My answer be is, if you're here illegally, I would tell people, listen, if you are found to be in violation of law and, you know, you, you don't come in to be removed or to voluntarily go home and file from your home country you will be barred from being able to remain in the United States down the road. The idea... So we are going to round them up and send No, no, back. no. They will self-remove themselves, and I will tell you why. Because otherwise, you're going to have to say to these folks, what name do you want on your green card? Do you know that the 19 terrorists who attacked us on 9-11, in the aggregate, used over 360 false names? And it was easy for them to get the false names. When I arrested drug dealers, murderers, terrorists, and I did as an agent, I was an agent for 30 years, I can't tell you how many times I found somebody who had 20 different identities. So how in the world 
Can you make a determination in a matter of minutes without having the resources to go out into the street how long someone's been here or how worthy they are of, of being able to stay? There's a lawful process to come here. And the bottom line is if you allow them to stay, then there will be an expectation that this will happen again. That's what happened in 86. In 1986, Ronald Reagan said, we're doing it one time. It will never, ever, under any circumstances, for any reason, be allowed to happen again. One-time deal, never again. Then we were dealing with a couple of million. Now we're dealing probably with tens of millions. So do you think anyone is going to take us seriously? You know, you get one opportunity for a first impression. We have the world convinced, and I don't blame the world. I, I don't blame the illegals. I blame our government for not deterring illegal behavior that has real-world consequences. We have hundreds of American cities now infested by transnational gangs, and it's not just about Mexico or Latin America. It's not about brown or black or white or green or purple or polka dot skin. It's about the distinction between what it is to be a citizen and what it is to be an alien. How in the world have we gone to the point where being pro-American brands you as being anti-immigrant when, ha when we are the most welcoming country on the face of the planet right now? What happens to the children? If they were born here, they are American citizens. Right. So their and, parents and their, go back. Their no, wait parents a moment. Their parents have to go their back. Their parents have to right. go back for All right. let, me make, let, let me make my point. Now, Ellis Island, by the way, was a quarantine station. The, the open borders folks, I call them the immigration anarchists, get dewy-eyed when you talk about Ellis Island. Many families were split up at Ellis Island if people had dangerous diseases and so forth. An American child is free to travel freely back and across that border a million times, okay? So they can stay here with another relative. They can go home with their parents. They're always welcome to come to America. The family would ultimately have to make the decision as to what's in the best interest of the child. Oh, I'm glad I'm not that family having to make that decision. Well, then they shouldn't have come here My illegally children in the first stay, place. But I have to go home and oh, well, but I they don't can, know. or they can go with you and come back whenever they want. But that's the way it works. You know, if you make mistakes, and these aren't mistakes, you don't just trip across the border by accident. And let me tell you the other bad part about having lots of illegal aliens. We are enabling Mexico and the elite of Mexico to continue to abuse their own people because it's a wealthy country with hardworking, industrious folks. So what they have done... But that's changing. But that is changing. There are many yeah. fewer... Uh, that's not true. That's not true. No, I, Mexico, no, you're wrong. The economy There's in more Mexico coming. Is improving. You're wrong. No, absolutely not. Talk to the Border Patrol, not the administration. They are lying through their teeth. I've spoken to Border Patrol agents. They are inundated. They can't stop the flood, and if they do anything too aggressive, they get into trouble. It's about this fantasy that the border is under control. It's not. I'm in a documentary. A couple of documentaries, They Come to America, Part 2, and Freedom Under Fire, Part 2, and you will see what the border looks like. It's a mess. But the point is that this enables Mexico to continue to exploit their own citizens because in addition to exploiting their people so that they can get the remittances, because every year they're getting tens of, mil of billions of dollars in American dollars, they are sending us their young, able-bodied men, the people that would normally be storming the gates and demanding real change in their own country. Listen, um, Dr. Reese, Dr. Flash, and happy birthday, Dr. Reese, and many thank more. You. Um, thank you for the tough questions. I enjoy it. Michael Cutler, thank you for coming <laughs> in the studio. Take everybody. Thank you for listening. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people.